Thank you for joining me for more classical painting tips. Today we're going to look at a painting of buoys. And a reminder that I offer private lessons and consultations and feedback via Zoom and video recording and also in person for locals at OceanViewArts.com. So here's today some tips for painting buoys. This is a student's painting who requested feedback on how to make it look a little more realistic and 3D. So we're going to explore that today. Now, I do appreciate having reference images. Uh, that would be an image of what you use to draw from. But the student did not have one. And if you don't have one, we can still do a lot. It's just that we can do more if we do have reference images whether that's a photo that you took or another painting that you, you are uh, copying. So we are going to look at values and form. Values are how you create form and values are uh, shades of gray from dark to light. So our first question is where is the light coming from? Now we can see a little tiny bit of shadow on the right side of some of these objects and certainly on the bottom too. Uh, so that would tell us that the shadow's coming from above and on the left. But it's not a very strong light. So if we, if we make the light a little bit stronger, the feeling of light and shadow, we'll get more of a feeling of three-dimensional form. So these buoys are mostly cylinders. And on the right, we see a classical uh, light and shadow on a cylinder, which would have noticeable light on the left. In this case, with the light coming from the left, shadow in the middle, a little bit of reflected light on the right-hand side. We can see a little bit of that in this painting. It's just that it needs to be a little more enhanced to give a very 3D look. So this is where I dropped in some shadow. Now, I am just, this is very, um, um, you know, a very quick kind of value change here. I'm not using Photoshop. I'm not softening the edges. I'm just dropping in some values so we can get a little bit of an idea. And you can see this better if you qu squint your eyes. Squinting your eyes is a really good technique anytime you're painting anyway. But if you squint your eyes, you can kind of get the sense of a little more feeling of light from the left and shadow from the right. Now we see this little piece of rope underneath this buoy and notice that it has light on it. However, it the bottom of the buoy has shadow and there really isn't any way that light could go through that buoy and hit that piece of rope. So we are gonna darken that. We're gonna darken the other ones a little bit too, but it'll help enhance the feeling of light and even little tiny details like that are very meaningful. So there we go. So that immediately, uh, puts the focus on the light on the buoys. So this buoy here, the blue and white one, is in front of the yellow one, and it has shadow on the right-hand side, so it would have to cast some shadow on the yellow buoy. So we'll see what that looks like. There we go. So that immediately pushes that buoy a little bit forward. I'm not exactly sure what's going on on the left. It looks like um, at the top of the the blue and white buoy, it looks like the red buoy is behind it. But when we look at the bottom of the red buoy, it looks like it's next to it. So that's not exactly explained. Um, I really would want to push it back. The other thing is both of those buoys, the red one and the blue and the white one, are both at exactly the same angle. Uh, and it's more interesting to have different angles. So uh, if I was drawing this from scratch, I would probably take that red buoy and push it behind a little bit and angle it slightly to the right. Okay, so now we have the little ropes at the top and they will actually have light and shadow on them too. They are essentially skinny little cylinders. So we'll put some light and shadow on those. There you have it. And that makes them look a little bit more three-dimensional. I've also put a couple of little highlights on the knot at the bottom. 
even though it's not the first thing you look at in the drawing, it subtly enhances the look of the, um, uh, the sense of three dimensions in the painting. And then I added some highlights. Again, I am not blending here. You know, blended edges are a very important part of realistic painting, and I am not addressing that in this particular video. I'm just laying chunks of value on top so that we can get a little bit of a sense of how 3D form can be enhanced by value. And so we do see it. I added a few highlights here, and those in an oil painting would be blended in because I'm just using simple shapes to do this. We don't see blended in here, but you can get the feeling of it if you squint your eyes and we'll look at how they both look. So if you squint your eyes at these two, we see the before on the left and the after on the right. And so you can see that by adding shadows and some reflected light and some high, a little bit of highlights and adjusting a few of the other pieces, that we get the feeling of three dimensions, three dimensional form in, uh, in the painting. So that answers the student's question, which was, how can I make this painting look a little more realistic and a little more 3D? So thanks for uh, enjoying this with me. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. And remember that I offer private lessons and all kinds of other wonderful things at oceanviewarts.com. So thank you again for joining me and have a creative day.